Welcome to eLearning Today TV. I'm Lauren. And I'm Lena. And we're here to bring you some videos and some information and some news that's going on this week. Um, the first video that I found, it's actually um, a, I've never heard of this word, but she's a recreational math, me math musician. Wow. Um, that's that's so, kind of cool, but I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I read her bio, and, <laughs> and this girl's name is V Hart, and basically she loves all different kind of music and math, and she kind of incorporates it into what she does. Oh. Um, and she has this video that I highlighted this week. It's called Doodling Stars. And I'm just going to play a minute of it. It's um, basically showing a student or her as a student um, doodling, but as she's doodling, she's actually... Um, learning about the lesson that's going on in the class. So I'm just gonna play a minute of it first. Let's say you're me and you're in math class and you're supposed to be learning about factoring. Trouble is, your teacher is too busy trying to convince you that factoring is a useful skill for the average person to know, with real world applications ranging from passing your state exams all the way to getting a higher SAT score, and unfortunately does not have the time to show you why factoring is actually interesting. It's perfectly reasonable for you to get bored in this situation. So like any reasonable person, you start doodling. Maybe it's because your teacher's soft, <laughs> perfect voice reminds you of the lullaby, but you're drawing stars. And because you're me, you quickly get bored of the usual five-pointed star and get to wondering, why five? So you start exploring. It seems obvious that a five-pointed star is the simplest one, the one that takes the least number of strokes to draw. Sure, you can make a star with four points, but that's not really a star the way you're defining stars. Then there's a six-pointed star, which is also pretty familiar, but totally okay, different Okay, so that's star, um, the first part of the video. And then you're As you can see, how much, like, you can put it. um, it's kind of funny. She has a bunch of videos on her site and her blog, and um, they range from, like, binary stuff to, um, what else was there? Like, snakes and graphs and infinity, all different kinds of stuff. But cool. basically the video kind of shows you that math kind of is all around you and also you could be learning and not realizing it um, and kind of relate it to other things and the other thing I found on her site that was cool was like mathematical foods so she kind of like cuts apples and stuff into like different shapes and all this stuff so there's really cool stuff I have a link to that um, if you want to check it out I think it's great to show people that you can kind of find math everywhere yeah, I kind of like that. She sounded fun. Yeah, it was kind of, it was a little long, so I don't want to play the whole thing, but it was a cool video. Yeah, it reminded me of a lot of the classes that I took. Not Did math, because I love <laughs> math. I was really good at math, but um, yeah, some history and all the stuff. But I'm sure it applies to yeah, the any subjects, so. though. <laughs> cool. Well, one of the things that I found cool this week was that um, there is a, um, a bunch of colleges now giving out iPod touches to their students. And one of the examples that I found was uh, nursing um, students at UCLA and Ohio State. Um, and one of the ways that they're using the iPods, which I thought was really cool, was um, when they see um, their patients mm -hmm. and they don't speak English, for example, Spanish speaker uh, patients that come to um, be treated at the college and so forth. Um, they use the iPod to um, mm -hmm. translate so that they can give them the right information. So that was really yeah. cool, I thought. And um, they also have an app now that helps them stu study for the um, board exams. So mm -hmm. when they come out and graduate and so forth. And in, uh, in Ohio State, for example, they're using it to um, look at pictures of organs and um, some of the parts of the body and um, molecules and like things study that, tool. yeah, it's, it was really cool. So um, I thought that that was a, a great idea to kind of like um, let teachers in the lower grades, like mm -hmm. K to 12, um, understand that, you know, when your students go out there to college, now there's, there's no just need to know how to write, read, and do math and that kind of stuff. But um, they're going to need to be right. familiar with all these things, and, and most of them are na native, uh, uh, digital natives, but maybe some students are not. So it's kind of like kind of cool to yeah. get the educators understand that um, these are going to be kind of like tools of the future. So just you know, an inspiration for teachers to and parents to to um, encourage their kids and students to learn how are the different uses of the, the, the mobile um, devices and so forth. So, and really cool. Yeah, and speaking of that, um, I also highlighted, because I always talk about apps, the most popular 10 apps for iPad and the iPod. And I was 
thought it was interesting is actually read that um, the since the app store opened in 2008, right. that there um, people are downloading at a rate of more than three billion apps per year, wow. and they're quickly approaching 10 billion. So That's whoever really cool. downloads the tenth tenth billionth app from the Apple Store is going to get a ten thousand dollar iTunes gift card. They already did. Oh, they already did. Sorry, and they, that is over. And they hanged up on the phone call, almost lost their ten thousand dollars. Really? Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, did they get it? Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> to that was. Well, yeah. So I highlighted um, the apps for both the iPhone and the iPad, and the just to quickly go through them for the iPad, it was Pandora, Radio, Google Earth, Remote, Solitaire, Google Map, Yelp, iBooks, Movies by Flickster, Fandango Movies, and the Bible. And for the iPhone, it was Facebook, Shazam, Bump, Paper Toss, which I actually talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, Pandora, Radio, Google Earth, Movies by Flickster, Google Mobile, and Weather Channel, and Skype. So Pandora and Google Apps seem to be the most popular right. ones there. Um, I actually have most of those on my phone too, even on yeah, my and iPhone. Yeah, th that's right. We have Blackberries, and, and they have a lot of these applications on Blackberry. So don't feel left out if you're not on. The yeah. Phone. So on I thought it, I thought that was interesting because that's probably the most downloaded apps in all smartphones. Yeah. Um, but those were the most popular top 10, and they actually highlighted the, I believe, 40, top 40. So I have a link to the list of the whole thing on there. So Cool. So talking about more um, on how e-learning is going to kind of um, override everything that we've known as in, in education, um, college colleges now are accepting videos as uh, instead of an mm -hmm. essay. So part of an interview process to get into college now. Some of them are accepting videos. And um, I, had the, I have the list on um, our top three articles of the week there and so forth. But I thought this was really great because it, it also helps the students to be innovative and really show their tr true self. Because if you go for an interview, you may be nervous and, um, and that kind of thing. And if your kind of life depends on getting into, let's say, Harvard, you may be nervous about it, but if you can do a video and be very creative, you can really show your true self there. And that also helps the college um, teachers and, and everybody in the panel is deciding whether you're getting into their college or not, is to ask. Have you seen Legally Blonde? Yeah, because she exactly. did that. For she did Harvard. that video. Uh, <laughs> that's a great example. <laughs> and I she got know. it. Legally she blonde is it. coming true. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, so is I found this in, inspiring for educators and parents who may think, well, what are the kids gonna do with all this later? Well, um, it's a reality now. So kind of get into Sounds that more mindset. fun than writing an essay. It is, and, and, the, and one of the things that um, a lot of these colleges struggle with was that um, a lot of kids are not prepared to write an essay, an entry essay to, mm -hmm. to college, or, or they use the same one. Everybody talks about their challenges and that kind of thing, and so you kind of get in that mindset uh, of, oh, I gotta talk about maybe the challenges that I had and why am I different, but it, it, it kind of limits you to a piece of paper as opposed to really showing your personality and how you may be able to fit in and so forth. So um, it's a, it's a yeah. great way to apply e-learning to, to you know, the, the now and, you know, it's, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> so no more excuses pretty much. So. All right. Well, that's our show, so we'll see you next week.